Tom here from Learn Systems, and we're going to talk about gateway groups and load balancing in PFSense. Now, the first question I want to get out of the way, because this question comes up quite a bit and is most commonly asked, is if you have more than one service provider for your network connection, can't you load balance your way to mega connection, the cumulative rate of all those connections combined? And that's not exactly how that works. I have a video linked down below about SD-WAN where I kind of explain, yes, you can bond them together, but when you bond them together, you only get the connection speed that's available to a single host in a single, let's say, TCP stream. It doesn't automatically bond all the connections together to give you the cumulative rate. Now, we are going to talk about load balancing because when you have many hosts, and it's often why this is done, it will balance the connections across multiple connections, but it does not automatically just give you let's say when you're doing a download or a speed test, the rate, depending on how many streams that speed test is actually testing or those connections allow. So something, for example, requires a single TCP stream, it's only going to go as fast through a single provider. That's where that SD-WAN comes in because bonding different providers together, well, that's something that can be done. It's just a little bit more complicated than just setting up a load balance. But today we're going to focus on the load balance, the gateway groups, how to set them up. And I did another video on policy routing. We're going to be covering how you set the policy routing to make that work. It's very similar to policy routing, but we're actually going to policy route not just off of a gateway, but off of the group that we build for either the load balance or the failover. And yes, you can have many of them or multiple in there. Now, before we get started in this video, let's thank a sponsor first. Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Let's do a quick overview of how this lab is set up. This is a basic Ubuntu system I have set up at 192.168.40.151 that is behind the PFSense. It has the option of going out WAN2 or WAN, and these are the addresses set to WAN2 and the other WAN. Then it goes to our simulated internet, which then lands on 172.16.69.152. I'm using a tool called iperf3, so we can create a connection from here and figure out which way it's going to route, or we're going to actually balance the routes between them, and then land over to this IP address. Now, by doing this and switching, and we'll simulate a failover, you'll see how the switching occurs and how the bandwidth management works for there, because we're going to do it first with a single stream, and then we're going to start splitting the streams to kind of get an idea of how that load balance part works. All right, so we're over in our PFSense. We can see 192.168.3.217 here and 192.168.4.5. Those are the two different WANs that are set up. We go to system and routing. We can see that the WAN DHCP, which is just the regular WAN, is set to the default gateway. So if we do a quick test with the default gateway set, and we're just going to switch over here and just do an iperf test. So now we're sending some traffic at about 200 megs a second. And you can see that traffic going over WAN, not WAN2. WAN2 is only in the kilobits. This one's going in about 26 uh, megabits here, so you can see it matches the amount that's going out the LAN. If we go over here to system routing, and we were to switch it to be WAN2 gateway, hit apply, jump back over here, do this up arrow, we're just gonna run that same test again. And now we see the traffic going out WAN2. Pretty simple to get these connections going out either one of them and switch your default gateway. Let's go ahead, though, and go back over to routing and build a balance group. So we're going to call this one balance. Tier 1, Tier 1. When you want them balanced, you choose them both to be the same tier. This will create a balance group between these two different interfaces. Or if you had more interfaces, the same rules apply. 
And then as far as member down packet loss or high latency, these are some options you can choose when you want to remove that member from the list. So it'll work also as a failover, even with them at the same tier. It's just going to split the connections between these two services. So we'll leave it at the trigger level. Uh, we'll go ahead and do packet loss or high latency because I usually want them to drop out once there's too much packet loss on one of these. You can also adjust these latency and packet thresholds. I have another video linked about how to do gateway monitoring on PF sensor. I dive more into detail on that. We'll call this our balance connection. Save, apply. Now you're probably thinking that should do the trick and then we should have balance, but actually there's another step you need to do. So this did set up the balance, but what it didn't do was automatically create a rule for it. So right now it's still going to go out whatever the default gateway is. So we're going to go over here to firewall rules. Then we're going to go to LAN. We need to edit this rule. Now this is the same as my policy routing video that I was discussing the other day. I'll link that one down below, but we're going to go down here and we want to choose the balanced option for the gateway. So the gateway balanced, hit save and apply. So now we can look at this rule. This is the allow all rule balance. Now you can choose each individual network you have or different rules based on policy routing that you want balanced. Maybe you don't want everything balanced. Maybe you want certain things balanced. You could have different rules based on different sources, different networks. So that is the policy works the same way for creating it and applying it then to a load balance group. So let's go ahead and run the test again. So go to the screen here kick off this iperf test again, and we can see the same speed because as I said, it's not gonna give you more speed, but what you're gonna notice is it's only sending it out WAN. This is the single stream problem because by default, iperf only sends a single stream. So if we take the stream though, and we're gonna change it and we'll use the option dash capital P and we'll break it out just into two streams. And now it's going to load balance because with two streams, now we've got two of them running simultaneously. Half goes here and half goes here. So the cumulative of WAN and WAN2 equals the total for LAN now, because now we created that balanced connection between these two devices. But as I said, if there's a single stream, there's nothing it can do. It can't break that single stream to put it across two, because that's not how TCP IP connections work. All right, the next thing we're going to do is fail this connection. And the way I'm going to fail it is just disable it inside my lab. You'll actually see this go offline packet loss. And we're gonna run the connection again just to show you how that works. It was still able to find the connection. But of course, it's only gonna go out because it can't go out WAN 2s, it's down. It's only gonna go out the one WAN. So the load balance works perfectly fine for this. It will split them. It will easily fail over when one of these goes down. So let's go ahead and bring this one back up and create a different group. So we're gonna have system, routing, gateway groups, and we'll just have a failover group. And we want the first WAN to be tier one. Well, let's make this one tier two and that one tier one. There we go. We want it to default to this. Same thing, member down, hit save. And this is going to be our failover one. I guess we could probably give it the description of failover group. Hit save, apply. And then we go back over here to firewall rules, LAN, and we can create another rule or we can edit this one and change this one from balanced to failover group. Hit save. So now this, instead of splitting, is gonna be in a failover mode. So right now it's gonna to default to this one here. You can see the little globe to tell me that the 4.1 is the default gateway. So if we go over here, run a test. It's on WAN right now, going out WAN 2. Now we're going to go ahead and drop WAN2, put it offline, offline packet loss, which broke this connection. So we're going to just going to cancel it. I'm going to terminate it because when you drop it, it's going to drop that connection. Server busy. Try again later. It's going to take a second to drop all those connections that we just broke because it's thinking there's another test still coming in. All right, we can start the connection again here. And if we go over here, now it's going out WAN 1. That's all you have to do, pretty simple. Now, for the rules, you can create, as I said, different rules inside of here. So we did this one for failover. Maybe you want a rule where you have single hosts that you want, so certain sources, maybe single hosts or alias. You want like these ones to work and say, 
For example, if the source is the IP address of the system we're doing, we want this one to be part of that load balance group. So we're going to go ahead and change the gateway to balanced on this one. Then other devices will be all on the failover. So anything over here is going to be balanced. Anything on this one's going to be failover. You can see how you can kind of build your rules out on an as needed basis for those. It's really that simple for setting the failover groups and gateway groups. You do want to make sure one thing, because this is my favorite way I learned to break PFSense setting up this demo. This one's set up for balance. This one's set up for failover. And I'm going to kind of call this a bug because we can go here to our gateway groups. And if we want, we can delete a gateway group. If you delete a gateway group, that is assigned. Instead of getting an error, you'll manage to lock yourself out of the PFSense. You can go to the command line and restore that last change you made that locked you out of the PFSense. This causes kind of an interesting condition. I didn't see if there's a bug report on this yet, but if not, maybe I'll follow one because it should warn you that these groups are in use. Also of note, if you set them here to something other than automatic, such as the failover group and hit save and apply and then delete, one of those gateway groups that are applied there, it will also lock you out of your PF sets. A couple quick things I learned during the demo. Now, a couple advanced topics I want to cover here. One of them is problems with load balancing, and this is all in the PFSense documentation. And the sticky connection feature is intended to fix this potential problem. And that's that a expected site may require a host. Let's say your phone is wanting to connect to some site or a client behind your PFSense, your computer is trying to connect to a site. And it expects not only the first connection, but subsequent connections to all come from the same IP address. And in a case of having two different ISPs with two different public IP addresses, if you balance the subsequent connections so they come differently, you could run into a little bit of problem. And this is where they have the sticky connections for that. So let's show you where the sticky connections are. We go to system, advanced, miscellaneous, and just check the box, use sticky connections. No need to reboot your firewall if you do this or change anything really. You just click save. But this sticky connections may solve if you're having problems with this. This could actually cause a lot of drama that you may not even know about when you set up a load balance because you don't necessarily know what doesn't work by having those connections come from two different sources until you have a lot of clients on a network. So that option is there if you need it. And this is called unequal cost load balancing. PFSense software can achieve unequal cost load balancing by setting the appropriate weights on the gateways to discuss under advanced gateway settings. By setting a weight on a gateway, it will be used more often in a gateway group and weights can be set from one to 30 allowing. And this is where you're gonna set your splits to split up the loads. Note, this is a distribution of strictly balancing number of connections. It does not take into consideration the interface throughput or existing load into account. So we're gonna split the connections based on the quantity of them, not the bandwidth that they're using. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick. Now to do the unequal cost load balancing, these are where those settings are. We're gonna edit the gateway. And we're just going to set this one at a weight of two. So this one has a weight of two. We're going to hit save. We're going to look at the other one. We're going to leave it at a weight of one. So that's the default. So we've got those both set now. Make sure we apply the changes. Now, this applies equally to both of these. It doesn't really matter, though, unless you're using the balance because they're both set to tier one. So then it will take that into account. So we're going to go and make sure we're using that particular rule. And we are. Here's our default gateway rule. It's set to the balance. Both of these gateways are active. So we go here. And now we're going to see how the connection loads between them. So we'll just split this to iperf-p100 for 100 connections. And it will now distribute those connections based on that weight. So because this one has a higher weight, this one's going to get most of the connection. So we got 18 going here, and we got about 8 going here to build the cumulative of our LAN. Now, if we wanted to adjust that balance differently, go over here, back to our routing. Go here and set this to a weight of 3. Save, apply. Back to here, and let's see how it distributes it now. Run that connection test again. And it brought this one down to about six. And that means this one goes up to about 20 to 
get that connection going across there. Kind of gives you an idea how you can adjust those and tune those based on your requirements. If those are requirements, generally you just load balance them and let it spread the connections out across there and it generally works fine. So hopefully this leaves you with a clearer understanding of how PF Sense works in terms of load balancing. Do take the time to read through their documentation. I always recommend it. That's the source material I have for my videos here in case anyone was wondering. They add in lots of testing and labs to learn what you can break. That's always the fun thing and why I have a lab. Leave your comments and thoughts down below or head to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. Thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.